Let me uh, get this going. Oh, man. We do wish that we were sponsored by Spindrift. I am actually. They reached out. I am. I'm not allowed to use my water bottle anymore. I have to go all Spindrift, and they want Man. me. To, they want me to keep the label out. Uh, thank you to Spindrift. I'm actually. Um, huh. I just bought a new house. Yeah, Thanks well, I've been tasked by Topo Chico to sabotage this brand by the following. Ugh! Spindrift. Ew. And I would it just like, like to. Piss. <laughs> I wish it was Topo. It does taste like piss, but the nice kind. Mm. I do wonder what. Do you ever wonder what it tastes like, piss? I've tasted piss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, uh, tell me how. Uh, one time, my brother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was just pissed in my mouth. No, my parents never let us have soda and stuff, so we were like good parents. As a kid, I was like, "Fuck, I want soda." Mm-hmm. And I remember I saw a Coke in my brother's room. <laughs> and him and his friend were out in the living room, like watching TV or something. And I was like, I'm going to drink that fucking Coke. And I took one sip and just was like, oh, what the fuck is wrong with this Coke? And I ran out and I was like, that Coke in your room went bad or something. And his friend just went, you fucking drank it. I pissed in it. Why? He was trying to get my brother to drink it. Uh... They were like doing it to each other. Trying to get each other to drink their piss? Yeah. Damn, that's some boy that's boy mode I stuff. I got fucked. Yeah, you drink the piss. I drink the piss. I've never um I've never had piss. <laughs> I am Try it. I'm kinda I mean <laughs> I'm curious. You wanna do it right now on air? <laughs> no. I just peed. You know what I have been doing? Drinking your own piss. Drinking no. your own cum. No. <laughs> There were, there were some guys in the comments who who gave me the tip to to stop the dribble after you pee to like press on your taint, and it works. Oh yeah, there was also guys who said sit when you piss. Yeah, Adam no, does. My no, friend Adam does that. No, the one I know. Yeah, Adam he sits Kraut, when he pisses. He sits when he pisses. Why? I don't remember why. I think he says it's more efficient. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then someone else told us to wipe every time we piss. Wipe your butt. <laughs> Your penis. Oh, well, who would tell us that? That's like- In the comments. Duh, sure, okay. You wipe your penis well, all the time? sometimes I'll take a little square, a, a square of toilet paper and polish it off. That's not the right way to talk no. about it. <laughs> Apple shares are just getting hammered this morning. Every day they're I guess that's as good a place as any to say hello to Glenn and (laughs) and encourage everyone to go check out the disclaimer that's in the description box, which you can find by clicking more, see more. I will never get it right. And frankly, I don't care. No one cares. I don't care. They don't come for that. Uh, So uh, what? We should also bring attention to, should we tell people to subscribe? Yeah, we're we're doing okay. We're- Oh, no, no, no. Subscribe. Oh, he burp. Away from the Uh-oh, light. he burping. You know what it is? Ever since I got this sponsorship, uh-huh. I got all these bubbles in my tummy. Um, I like how we both took a sip at the same time. Mm. No, subscribe to After Hours. Yes. Also, yeah, we're doing a whole new format of the show. It's no longer Trillionaire Mindset. It's just- uh, It's just mindset. It's just mindset. And we're just going to talk about- um, uh, Mental health. Mental health. Because you guys seem to like that. Yeah. And- uh, after hours will still be, you know, Bonky and the Beatman and Chonzo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh Yeah, we had a real banger of an episode last week and if you missed it, that's your fucking funeral, man, or your graduation or your bris. I and if know. you want to get in there and be able to uh read some extremely horny comments, you're going to want to oh, subscribe. Man, these people with their horny comments. I forgot what we had talked about. We brought up cuz someone said <clears throat> someone said people the, that female audience only watches the show because I look like, because they want to fuck, fuck you. me, yeah. because I look like Jesus or something. Uh-huh. And so we asked if our female listeners actually do just enjoy the show. Uh-huh. And they're saying, yes, they do. But also, 
Read some. Um, let's see. I think I am a I female think... fan whose mom always tells me I should ask if me if Emil is single whenever he she sees me watching this show. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, that's that that one is that one's the best one I've seen actually, because all I want is for moms to like me. So that's great. Yeah. Uh, I'm a female fan and I'm a huge lesbian. Hope that answers your question. Thank oh, you, Stephanie See? Robertson. This one says, you guys are hilarious, but yes, we all want to fuck Emil so badly. Cool. Thank you. I'm right here, but thank you. Hi, Ben and Emil. I'm a woman and I really love your podcast. Sometimes a little bit more than TMG podcast, but don't tell those guys. <laughs> don't want to hurt oh, their feelings. Late. You bring me so much joy and laughter every time. Okay, that's nice. Uh, female fan who loves the podcast, but would also marry Emil in a heartbeat. That's good. Hell yeah. So we got a lot of women out there. Hello. Uh, I am a straight male listener, and I would fuck Emil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Again, I'm right here, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what about this one? Female listener, Emil is lovely just as much as Ben, but I also just like to listen to y'all's silliness and accidentally learn about finance along the way. Well, we're not going to talk about finance anymore. Yeah, that's sorry. The thing. It's just the it's mindset. Just, it's just mindset. Um. <laughs> All right. That's enough. We got to- But yeah, if you want to get in there and type horny stuff, go- uh... Also, yeah. as long as we're talking about getting in there and typing horny stuff, I uh, would like to offer a hearty um, please step off to the Reddit community who is watching my um, likes. Oh, yeah, your likes on Twitter, your horny like. <laughs> Let me like whatever I want. Yeah, he likes Doja Cat and um, the other one. What's her name? Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. Two Lipas. I really like Dua Lipa. Yeah. You still don't think Erica looks like Dua Lipa, which is insane to me, because I think she looks just like her. Mm, I don't really They have a similar They have a similar look Also It helps me To not Associate Yeah I don't want to be Coveting Yeah <laughs> that's It's, it's nice for me To just see a You know A little Do a clip And be able to like You you do be Doing that leap You would like to Do a her leap No Me and do a It's a romantic thing Yeah that's true <clears throat> uh, She was a big Bernie girl Oh, interesting. Yeah. Did not know that. I think me and her are probably going to get together. Twin flames? Mm, what's that mean? Twin flame is like, there's variations on soulmate. There's twin flames. There's soulmates. There's- You think me and her are soulmates? Something like that. Yeah, I do. Nice. I do. Uh, <laughs> folks, okay. <laughs> you're going to want to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed. And for those of you who are new to being subscribers, thank you so much. We see you. We love you. We here for you. But also, you need to hit the notification bell. Our episodes come out every Friday, but if you go to the YouTube channel, there's a little bell next to where it says subscribed, and if you just select it and hit all, you will get a notification when the podcast done gone hit the, the, the wires, okay? So thanks for that. I also would like to give a shout-out to Marshall. Ha-ha. 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 What? I got a shout-out. You do? Who? I'm gonna shout. You can't out. shout out people. Okay, fine. Rules Go ahead. No, rules. no. Who are you gonna shout out? I gotta shout out my boy Ian because we. Uh, I was on a Greek island. Oh. Walking around, I'm a little drunk. Had too much sun. Got off a boat, walking around, and someone was like, "A mule," and I was like, "What's up, dude?" And he was like, "I never expected to see you here." And I said, "I never expected to see you here." But it was really, it was really funny because at one point I just he was he I think he was with his family. I th I heard his mom go, "Oh, Ian's Ian's friend is on the island," and uh, he just went, "It's not my friend. It's not my friend, mom." So shout out to Ian. What's up, Ian? Big ups. Big up yourself. Shout out to Marshall who helped me set up. Um, the the chat room, the Discord room is coming. It's going to be called. I couldn't decide between Traders Treehouse or Trading Treehouse, so I went. I trading. Think, I think I did Trading Treehouse. That one's better. But Marshall helped. And me it's going like, to be just like most treehouses. No, no girls allowed. allowed. So if you're a girl, sorry, babe. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I like my treehouses like I like my porn. No girls allowed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gay porn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man. So uh, he helped me for like three hours. It was really cool because I needed um, to do some stuff to satisfy Glenn. Uh, satisfy Glenn? Yeah. Okay. Don't. All right. <laughs> Don't. Glenn gets satisfaction from his wife. Does he? 
Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. He's happily married. Glenn, sound off in the comments. <laughs> Glenn's, <laughs> uh, Glenn's wife, sound off in the comments. Better yet, subscribe and get horny in the in the after hours. Yeah, comments. yeah. Um, so, <laughs> just we're on our road to. We're almost. Are we at 36 or no, thir- 32? 32.6 subs. We're almost. Wait, the- this is also a good. This is also a good time to note one thing. What? We have what started off as a joke is now becoming me and Ben's obsession. We actually want to go to Japan. Yes. It's obviously a logistical nightmare. So yes. our executive producer told us one of two things could happen. We can we can go if we hit a hundred thousand subscribers. Yes. That might take a while. Or if we somehow self fund it. Yeah. So should we, we're asking should, you, should we set up a GoFundMe? To, to try to get us to Japan. To get us to Japan. We're not only going to record episodes, we'll also do travel vlogs. We'll do uh, live, we'll set up a camera. Me and Ben will only get twin beds wherever we go. We'll both share that twin bed. <laughs> and there will be a live feed <laughs> that you guys can check in. Of us sleeping. Of us sleeping bed. in the twin bed. And me using a bidet going, ooh, <laughs> ooh, oh. <laughs> That's how I sounded when I first tried a bidet. So, if that's something you're interested in, let us know, and we'll try to go that route. Otherwise, we'll have to wait till we get 100,000 subscribers, and then we can go to Japan. Well, I'm probably going to Tokyo anyway, because I have 326,000 Singapore Airlines miles absolutely roasting a hole in my pocket. They expire in August, so I've got to use them, and I was thinking I'm going to book a trip anyway. I burped away from the mic. Um... Also, Tokyo. I was wrong. Tokyo isn't fully opened up yet to just tourists. <clears throat> if you have family there, they can like vouch for you for a visa. Or if you have business there, you need a business there to vouch for you. So if we have any Tokyo-based or Jap- Japan-based listeners out there who could feasibly vouch in the visa Come for, on, vouch for me or both of us, please let us know. DM me. There was one girl who lives there... Um, I can't remember if it was on Twitter or Instagram, but we talked about it. And uh, God, it'd be nice to go now, not full of like tourists and stuff. Yeah, I know. Well, so there, uh, this one website was speculating that by fall they will fully open uh, it up. So I was going to book my ticket for. I was going to shoot for the last week of October just to be, yeah, on the safe side. Uh, hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, it's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify is a platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like myself the resources once reserved for big business, customized for my needs, with a great-looking online store that brings my idea to life, and tools to manage my day-to-day and drive sales. Making your idea real opens endless possibilities. It's a journey, but that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. I love how Shopify makes it easy for anyone to successfully run their own business. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs just like me, from first sale to full scale. And every 28 seconds, a small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. That's right, Emil. That's the sound of a first sale. Get started by building and customizing your online store with no coding or design experience. Access powerful tools to help you find customers, drive sales, and manage your day-to-day. Gain knowledge and confidence with extensive resources to help you succeed. Plus, with 24-7 support, you're never alone. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash trill, all lowercase for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash trill right now. Shopify.com slash trill. Anyway, let's get the show rolling, <clears throat> man. We got Crypto Corner kicking things off. Beep, beep, beep. We missed a lot. Oh, also, what's going on here? He's got a, for the audio listener, he's got a Bitcoin hat on and he's putting on his sunglasses. He's kind of scaring me. What's happening? Got to put on my sunglasses. You know why? Why? Because I got fucking laser eyes, bitch. Why? Why? Did you get a Bitcoin? I own a Bitcoin now. No. Pussy. And I need to wear the sunglasses to protect you from my laser eyes. Wow. Well, you want to see him real fast? Yeah. You want to see the laser eyes? Ah! <laughs> he does have them. Ah! Careful now, so the sunnies protect 
So you don't the no coin pussies from the late. You don't guys. mind hanging out with a no coin pussy? <sighs> I mean, I do, but where else? Where else am I going to go? This is uh, th- this is a tough <laughs> bitch. <laughs> This is a tough situation because I'm actively rooting for you to fail. Yeah, well, that sounds like loser pussy talk to me, bitch. I like you getting in on the way down. Me too. I bought some Bitcoin, and it now totals one Bitcoin. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Am I down on it? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter, bitch. Bitcoin solves everything, motherfucker. It will come back to- uh, I cuss a lot more now that I own a Bitcoin. Yeah, you're kind of a bad boy. Yeah, shut up, bitch. I like it. I am a bad boy. Don't tell your mom. There's, Actually, there's a, everybody tell your mom. There's a line of women beating on the on the recording studio. Calm down <laughs> out there. I'll be out there in a minute. They love they love bad boy Ben. Oh, man. I'm such a bad boy. I think Bitcoin is the bee's knees. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It can solve everything from homelessness to the now, are you telling, route. Now, are you telling people to uh, get in? You think everyone should get nope, in? Nope, I cannot say that. <laughs> <laughs> but as a Bitcoin holder, as a Bitcoin holder, I can just say that Bitcoin rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it goes to zero. Bitcoin fucking whips ass, and you know what? If it does go to zero, that's fine with me. I hope it goes negative, and you owe. I owe someone money. Yeah, <laughs> would I owe money? To? Satoshi. Satoshi. Yeah, I think I know <clears throat> who he is, but uh, do you? Yeah, it's I think of, I've said it's this none before. of your business. I really, though. I really don't even want to know because. Don't want to know what? Who it is. Oh, why? Because there was that guy they were suing, and he was claiming to be the Bitcoin creator. Oh, yeah. The there was just some like absolute doof in a suit, you know what yeah. I mean? But in my head, he looks like a time crisis villain, you know? Oh, time crisis. For those of you who don't know. Can we look up a time crisis villain? No coin pussy over here is referring to a video game, arcade game back in the day that had these plastic guns that you would fire at Have the you ever gone to Button Mesh and seen the guy who... Look at these guys. This is what this is what oh, yeah. Satoshi looks like. Look yes. at the first. <laughs> that, that's that one right there. Satoshi Nakamoto for sure. <laughs> oh man, Time Crisis was it's a it's a quarter eating game. Look, that's Satoshi, baby. Yeah, man. But have you been to uh, Button Mash where the guy plays with both guns on Time Crisis? No, it's really annoying. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so I, anyway, I, you're just waiting for it to go back up, I guess. Yeah, bitch. I bought. <laughs> <laughs> I bought I I own the bitcoin. I bought it. I had bids in and I can't I don't think I can even say the levels, but I had bids in and then they got filled and then it kept going lower. And I was like, "Fuck. Why? How does it work when you buy it? You you have to put a bid in?" Yeah, well, you yeah, you, it's just like a stock. You you bid you can buy it at the at the market, which just gets you in right now no matter what, right. whatever the current price is, or you can bid for lower. So like if it's at twenty, you put a bid at nineteen. It the bid stays there until Bitcoin goes down there, and then it gets filled if it reaches that level. Nice, it so, gets filled. Yeah, bitch. But um, so then I uh, I finally <laughs> I already took it off my Coinbase. It's in a hard wallet. It's in a. It's in. I. I. So I. I bought a ledger. Ledger is like a little. It looks like a little external USB drive. Sure. And this whole fucking time, I thought that it was where. I thought that. You plug it into your computer and you put the Bitcoin onto the thing. No, that's not what it does at all. All it does is give you a 24-word phrase. It's 24 random words that it generates randomly. And yours is just, you moron, you bought the dip, you it's, suck. It's Emil is shitty, he sucks ass, He's pussy, no coin, pussy, pussy, no coin, bitch. Bitch made <laughs> Dogecoin ass bitch. Sorry. <clears throat> anyway, I put it on there and uh, I learned. Yeah, I learned h- how it works. It. Uh, it just. It. So now my Bitcoin is safe. I have nobody can touch it except for me because I have the twenty four word. If I lose the ledger or if ledger goes out of business, it doesn't matter. I can just go find another wallet service online and enter in my twenty four word seed phrase. They call it. And then I have access to it. It really does solve everything. Bitcoin? Bitcoin? Yeah. Man, when I think about it now, I'm just like, damn. Yeah, I'm the- driving down the street. It's like when you first s- discover pot and you think, man, I, I want to try this on pot. I want to try that on pot. You want to try this on Bitcoin. Everything is like, damn, Bitcoin would be sick in this transaction. You know what Bitcoin could fix? My v- marriage. Nothing can fix my marriage. <laughs> 
Please take my wife. <laughs> Please. Uh, I wonder if I'm gonna be a wife guy when I get older. What is a wife guy? A exactly? wife guy is just like you're always joking about how much you hate your oh. wife. Now I'm gonna be the opposite. I'm gonna be a wife lover. Well, I don't know which one's worse. The guy who's always doing like the either his girlfriend or his wife. It's like just constantly like, oh yeah, my girlfriend, or like, oh my wife. And it's like, okay, do you yeah. fucking do anything? We get it, dude. I I think what's worse is the wife hater. Yeah, because oh, there's, I mean, there's something going like, on there. My landlord is one of those. Yeah, my wife, she's my boss. Like, okay, well, you know, divorce her then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shut up. Quit complaining. He shows me sometimes jokes on his WhatsApp. They're, they're like wife, anti-wife memes. <laughs> right. <laughs> he'll, he'll just start cracking up. <laughs> look at these, look at these. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. I got to go pee. Is that a generational thing or are, yeah, probably. Or are we going to become wife guys? First, we need wives. Yeah. Hey, if anybody out there, I own a Bitcoin, I just don't. so you know. So it's all, yeah, bitch over here. Hey, bitch, did you hear about, um? did you hear? <laughs> we're, we're, uh, it is funny, though, looking at Bitcoin where it is and, um, We've oh, been trying to get it's Michael. It's so funny to get into fucking crypto now. Why? Because you think that it's at the end? No, I don't think it's. It's probably not at the end. <clears throat> um, I think it's going to be like fundamentally different. I think it probably culled a lot of the uh, fluff. Culled a lot of the fluff. Yeah. <laughs> like oh. it was so bloated with oh, all yeah, these yeah. projects and everything. Yeah. And I think I'm sure Bitcoin will. Pro- I, I, I I mean I hope it doesn't. It was so nice watching it just fucking plummet. Well, it's it goes in cycles. Have you ever seen the yeah, rainbow but we're seeing chart? Lower lows. Yeah, yeah, but you know that's just how Bitcoin. It's not though because previously it would never hit lower lows. What is that sound? You're like Mace. You don't understand people with language short money. All I hear is bitch noises. Man, wait, wait. Is there, so can we play the Michael Saylor clip? Mike, play the Michael Saylor. Clip. This is you now. Yeah, well, look how handsome and hot he is. He is kind of handsome. He, wait, wait, so when was this clip? This I think this from, was like a year ago. I this think is this from was from a year ago when Bitcoin was at yeah, was 56000 <laughs> yeah, Michael, we got to get you on the show, buddy. You got to answer, have your assistant answer our producer's he, emails. Oh, yeah. If I told you I know how it all ends. <laughs> Insane voice. Right? Once you know how it all ends, that, that the only use of time is... He's very Jordan Peterson. How do I which... buy more Bitcoin? <laughs> how do I buy more Bitcoin? But take all your money, buy Bitcoin. Then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin. Then take all your time and figure out what you can sell to buy Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that, you're, that you don't want to sell it, go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. And if you've got a business that you love because your family works for the business that's in your family for 37 years Jesus, dude. and you can't bear to sell it, mortgage it, finance it, and convert the proceeds into the hardest money on earth, which is Bitcoin. Huh. So what I would say is use all your time to acquire Bitcoin, finance entities and weaker currencies to buy Bitcoin, or educate yourself on why this makes sense if you're not sure and then educate everybody around you you know if you're working for a company that's got a hundred million dollars in the treasury you ought to convince the ceo and the board of directors to convert the treasury to bitcoin (laughs) that's the most creative thing you can do that'd be worth billions to them it's like i would love to be the guy you convince your company to throw a hundred million dollars into bitcoin a year ago and now you're just like Oh, you know what you gotta fuck. do to get more Bitcoin? Sell your Bitcoin to buy more Bitcoin. If you sell Bitcoin, you get cash. Use that cash to buy more Bitcoin. That's actually not a bad idea. To sell your Bitcoin <sighs> to buy more? If you sold it at fucking sixty, yeah, and then sure, get in now at twenty. Don't even use all that money. Yeah, I love how he says, "Figure out how to borrow more." Yeah, <laughs> like Educa- I don't know how. <clears throat> Figure out how to borrow more. And he money. just says, "Educate yourself on why this is the greatest thing to do." It is, bitch. I ought to crack open this dollar right here and go deposit it to buy. Seriously, you're just letting money sit on the yeah, table. Yeah, I'm just letting it sit here. Man, I could be selling, the, I could be hawking this calculator, buy <laughs> Let's more Bitcoin. sell everything here. I could sell that picture of my dad for five bucks, get more Bitcoin. I need Jordan Peterson to interview Michael Saylor. You just can never tell who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the weeping one would be Jordan Peterson. <laughs> young, young men. So you're saying that Bitcoin is freedom for young men? Yeah, get the Bitcoin, 
<laughs> sell your wife, sell your girlfriend into slavery for more Bitcoin. That's not funny. No. I take that back. <laughs> I take that one back. You got to take the hat off and the sunglasses. Whoa, and- whoa, what happened? Oh, he's back. Huh. Nice guy. Why am I wearing sunglasses? <sighs> the laser eyes, baby. Why do I have this Bitcoin hat in my hand? I'm going to put it on and see what happens. No. Hey, bitch. We want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Going away this summer? Update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. Plans are flexible, so they work with your changing schedule. Foolproof, step-by-step recipes mean a joyful cooking experience and a stress-free summer. Plus, HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen and with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. Oh man, you know, I gotta tell you folks, cooking sucks, going to the grocery store sucks, but not with HelloFresh saves me so much time i don't have to think i don't have to do anything i just wait it comes in the mail and then i cook it up no problem it's easy they make it so easy they make it so fast you got pre-prepared ingredients you don't have to do they take all the guesswork out of it so you know who i cook hello fresh with who do you cook with my buddy my buddy boy we're cooking, here. Up together. we're cooking up beans baby beans salads all sorts of healthy stuff you know what my favorite hello fresh recipe is Oh, baby, you you better... Oh, is it the cucumber? Oh, oh the, the cucumber freaking salad cucumber salad. The stuffed pita, the stuffed pocket. pita pockets. Hoo-wee! Those really get me fired up. Ooh. What a summer treat. And now HelloFresh has 30 dinner recipes to choose from every single week. That's the most choices of any meal kit. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Trill16 and use code Trill16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Trill16 and use code Trill16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. <laughs> 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 hey, stupid no, bitch. take it off. I hate Damn, this you guy. know what I was just thinking about? I blacked out for a second, but I woke up thinking about Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin. Ben, come back. Man, I wish they could come back. I wish they would invent a ledger where you could grow titties on the, on the blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably someone, someone There's doing boobs it. out there on the blockchain. Jennifer Lopez, the first person to to insure her ass, is going to figure out how to put those boobies on Did the Did she insure her butt? Yeah, she insured her butt for like 20 million bucks. What does that mean? If she like loses her butt in a tragic accident? Yeah, if someone accident, lops it off. If that's someone insane. stabs her in the butt, she's like, thank God I got that insurance policy. That's crazy. And I'm over there going, laser eyes. I'm going to laser that butt off. So, you, Hey, Jennifer Lopez, let me take off these sunglasses. I'm going to use my laser eyes to puncture your butt. You get the insurance money and then use it to buy Bitcoin. That's actually a good- It's a great idea. Trade your ass for Bitcoin. And then when it goes up to a million, you could buy all the asses you want. Now we're talking. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm feeling something bubbling inside and I can't fight it. I don't what know would what you, it is. What, what, what body part would you insure if you could? Mm, penis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean- it's... No, it's got to be worth a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Probably my head. Your entire head? Yeah. Okay. Well, without it, the body is useless. True. Yeah. I'm going to put my head on the blockchain. I'm going to insure my hair. You're going to insure your hair? Yeah. That's a bitch move. You got to get a Bitcoin first, pussy. <laughs> stupid, All right, take the hat off. Stupid bitch. <laughs> oh, there he is. All right, that's enough of that bit. Coin. Oh, man. I liked being Bit- I like being a Bitcoin guy. I'm it's sure. so bright <clears throat> in here. Raw power. <laughs> after, after having my sunglasses on, it's so bright. Oh, baby. So uh, we also had that uh, Celsius thing happen. I still don't understand what it was because, um, frankly, I, I don't care. It was pretty similar to the like Terra Luna thing, offering high returns, and then they were using that money to uh, buy up, I think, Bitcoin and other coins. Yeah. Everything started tanking. They froze. Uh... And th- that was, that's probably had something to do with the big Bitcoin crash over the last couple of weeks, right? I think because there's speculation that the same thing, the same fate might befall Bitcoin that happened with Terra Luna. That's Uh, what I thought. Yeah, but I think it all. I think it's also all related to the Fed. Yeah, it is interesting. It seems to have found a kind because the the previous breakout point for Bitcoin was about nineteen thousand. I think it was the twenty seventeen level uh, that it had last. Yeah, let's pull up a five year chart. 
Um, yeah, 2017 is when it hit its like high, its all time high at the time, and then it wouldn't hit that level. Uh, excuse me, again until 2021, 2020. Excuse me, when it then broke out, and it's so in four years. Well, so yeah, you're gonna be riding high. <clears throat> I I mean, I really, I I probably was stupid for buying it when I did because I kind of was going into it with a trader mindset where I was thinking, oh, it's gonna like bounce. 50% here and then I'm going to be able to sell it for a nice quick little gain. But I have said on the show before that I do want to own a little bit just in case. In like, case what? In case everybody's fucking, in case all these dorks are right. Right. Because <clears throat> they've been right so far. I mean, Jesus Christ on the cross. They have they have been right. But right in what sense? Like, it depends what you want. Like, it, it's not a new currency i mean you can't the value you can't have your currency devalue by what is that 60 percent over yeah. six months like yeah totally <laughs> no you can't and i think i mean it's the thing is every time i read up on it or like watch a documentary about it it makes sense to me i'm like oh yeah okay i get it it is um it's kind of it is a hedge against inflation which is funny because now no it's you've not. got the inflation that it's supposed to hedge against, and yet look at where it is. And it's supposed to be a hedge against, you know, the government and all these regulations and stuff. Yeah. But it's 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 going up and down just with all this Fed stuff, the way everything else is. True. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Uh, to me, if it, it also boils down to math for me that there's only what twenty one million of them in circulation, which is nothing. So you're fully a fucking Bitcoin guy now. Yeah, pussy bitch. But. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, jealousy is a disease. Oh, I you find I think it, I think it is a little bit of jealousy of like the guys who just got rich off crypto is oh I'm mega jealous <laughs> yeah but like not in a distra- I'm it's so it's such a it's like someone winning the lottery where I'm like damn I'm jealous but right who would have fucking seen I would not have held on this long it's like people I know who gamble. Yeah. It's like when they hit big, I'm like, fuck, that is sick. I should gamble. My uncle texted me the other day. He said, Ben, I won $540,000 on a scratch-off ticket. And I was like, whoa, holy shit, congratulations, da 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 And for a brief moment, I thought, I bet he read the ticket wrong. But then I thought, nah, there's no way, because like, he would have made 100% sure. 20 minutes later, hello, Ben, I read the ticket <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I did not win the five hundred and forty thousand dollars. Did he get anything? <laughs> no, I don't know. Probably nothing. I think he. Had, I think he. What had, a roller coaster! Yeah, to go I won half, half a million, million dollars. dollars. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> and then it's, he, he's on uncle mode, so like every text is "Hello Ben" or "Hi Ben," comma, and then yeah. Right, he thinks it's email. Yeah, basically, there's something just fundamentally broken in in the brains of baby boomers. I'm not being ageist. My mom is one of those. Hi, mom. You know the you know the dad text. What is with? I thought that it was. Uh, I didn't know that it was universal. The dads watching movies in the living room by standing in front of the TV with their hand on their hip. Yeah, I don't know. My dad always would do that, and it bugged the shit out of me. I'd be laying on the couch. He'd be coming to or from the garage, and would stop. Put his hand on his Probably hip. Probably because he's busy. He doesn't have time to sit, but you know. Yeah, but to stand and just look down at the TV and watch like- But he wouldn't do it for- like, Major time, League right? 2. Major League 2, for now 15 we're talking. minutes. Hit, hit info. Hit info. <laughs> <laughs> hit info. Huh. Do you want something, Dad? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Oh, we're in the bear market, folks. Last week, apparently, was the market's worst week since March 2020. Spy was down- S&P was down 5.8%. Holy shit. And seven of the 11 sectors are now in official bear market territory. Jim Cramer says we're going to have a bull market within the bear market. Wait, he did? He said that? When? I don't know. Yesterday? We're going to have a bull market within the bear market. Shut the fuck he up, says, Jimmy. He I'm, I'm one of a handful of people who think. I just, I, I really don't have any problem with <clears throat> Jim Cramer. I just, I, I think it's amusing how other people hate on him so much. I don't. Because, like, who cares what he thinks? Who cares yeah, what Yeah, I don't care about thinks? that stuff, but he did call my wife a bitch on Facebook once. Did? Mm hmm. Well, what did your wife do? <laughs> okay. To deserve that. That's, um, okay. Well, <laughs> I wrote out a thing here about the, the bear markets. Because 
basically, as everything was just going up unrelentingly and, and I was kind of much like 2020, I was the beginning of 2020, you know, I was shorting the market as it went up, which was stupid because like Rivian IPO'd at like over a $100 billion valuation and right. they had sold what, like 50 trucks or something. <laughs> and I'm pulling out my hair going, what the fuck? is wrong with everybody how does everybody think that this can just continue indefinitely who the fuck is buying this you had coinbase ipoing and like rallying to i don't remember what their value oh close to 100 billion dollars interest rates were at zero you had trillions of dollars just pouring into the markets investors are throwing money at fucking video game retailers and and movie theater chains and getting Crazy rich, just all the signs were everyone there. spacking, spacking, spacking their goddamn dicks off. But and they're spacking companies that had no revenues, but had like literal PowerPoint presentations projecting like five years from now we're projecting ten billion dollars in revenue, and that was enough to spack. And uh, dude, and, come on, birds are gonna be everywhere. Oh, the scooters, yeah, and that that stocks down like ninety nine percent. You had Clover, the health and the Chamath Palihapitiya, every single one of his specs, of course, just diarrhea, diarrhea that broke the plumbing. Oh, hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode. That would be Public.com. Public is an investing app where you can invest in stocks, ETFs, and crypto with any amount of money. What I love about Public is that it helps people become better investors. You can follow other investors and share ideas. People like Graham Stephan, Cody Co, Shelby Church, and thousands more are on the app. Oh, I joined Public, and you can see what trends I follow if you just search for my name, Ben Khan, in the app. On Public, you can buy slices of stock, ETFs, and crypto versus full shares. Alongside thousands of stocks and ETFs, Public offers 11 crypto assets, including Bitcoin. Cardano, Ethereum, Doge, and Shiba Inu. Plus, Public puts investors first and doesn't sell your trades to market makers like other investment apps. They route the trades directly to the exchanges. You'll get a free stock worth up from $3 to $70 when you go to public.com slash trill and create an account. So get started today. Once again, make sure you go to public.com slash trill to get a free stock. Click the link in the description. There's this guy on TikTok who has plumbing so bad that when he poops and flushes it, he can Dude, stick his what head. What is going on on your TikTok? <laughs> what is going on? It's just uh, all breastfeeding and fucking diarrhea. Well, now I got people tagging me in breastfeeding videos and sending me, like, "Hey, check this out." <laughs> it just reinforces the algorithm. The algorithm's like, "Yes, we're learning. We're learning more about this one." This guy's obsessed with it. He loves it. And then I learned that I wasn't even a breastfeeder. I think my, my mom told me later, like, Dr. Nation told me that that was my pediatrician. Dr. Nation? Yeah. Dr. Nation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Nothing. Is that an inside joke or something? I don't know where. I don't know what happened. He was so cool. He was the best. He died a few years ago. Dr. Nation. Nord Nation. I think he was from Jamaica or Barbados. Did he spell it N A T Y O N? No, N A T I O N. Nation. Yeah, isn't that what I said? You said Y O N. No, who I didn't. just burped? Did someone burp? <laughs> was that you? No. Was that L Luke? Did you just burp? Oh. I think it was you. No, don't gaslight me. <laughs> don't tell me it was me. It wasn't me. I would know. I was in the middle of talking. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> my mom said I didn't suck on her boobs. So maybe you're overcompensating. Yeah. I'm trying to make up for lost time. There you are. Anyway, so you had everybody getting stupid rich. You had unprofitable tech companies going public at these nutso valuations. Companies are raising billions of dollars through SPACs, through PowerPoint fucking presentations. And here I am. I feel like a fucking moron for not taking advantage of this. We should have started a company. Dude, I'll tell you what. What? It is. So I, it's, I was just reading this article by Derek Thompson in The Atlantic, and it's about, what did he call it? The... Uh, the millennial lifestyle subsidy. And he, cause, millennial lifestyle subsidy. And it's basically because we're all watching the economy like change before our eyes, right? Yeah. Now, because there was all this cheap money. And so, <clears throat> and he has this funny quote about, uh, all right, so hmm. 
he says, if you woke up on a Casper mattress, worked out with a Peloton, Ubered to a WeWork, ordered on DoorDash for lunch, took a lift home, and ordered dinner through Postmates, only to realize your part your partner had already started on a Blue Apron meal. Your household had, in one day, interacted with eight unprofitable companies that collectively lost about fifteen billion dollars in one year. Yeah, we're fucking morons for not trying to get money from Silicon Valley. Right, and uh, and it made sense for them because they were taking all these big bets on like they they just needed one to be the next. Facebook or yeah. to be the next whatever and it would all be worth it right and so even you, then it was already worth it because they went public at such sky high valuations right. they all made their money it's insane it's it is insane but God, all, all that's so stupid all that's gonna go away though you're not gonna be able to like uh you know like doordash used to be able to get you food for super cheap like they're gonna yeah. people are gonna have to start paying what it actually costs for things yeah and it's gonna hurt yeah doordash and all that shit is making food more expensive I think and and I was going to say just now something else about how shit makes things more expensive um, just by virtue of existing and, and just prices have to go up. I don't know what I'm talking about. Where am I? You're in... Let's talk about Bitcoin more. No, no, no. Oh, no. come on, man. Ah, oh, pussy bitch. Um, I find this all very interesting, though, that I, we could I could have never expected that we'd have this show as all of this is unfolding right in front of us. I wish that we had had it when GameStop was happening because that was the most thrilling and I feel like that was when people were absolutely the most actively engaged. And you know that I owned 5,000 shares of GameStop at like yeah, $16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you I, sold it. I sold it at like $16. <clears throat> I mean, this one's more sad than anything. I think we're in for a, a tough time with the potential recession coming. I don't know. I have a lot to say about that. So by the way, we are going to, we're going to try to get a friend of the show, Kyla Scanlon, who is a uh, really sweet person and a very, very smart cookie. Um, What the fuck did I just say? (laughs) Did you, what? Uh, Did you say, did you call her sweet cookie? No, I said smart cookie and a sweet person. She's very, very. Did you say sweet cookie? No, smart cookie, sweet person. God, don't, don't, don't. All right. Anyway, Kyla is going to, we're going to try to get Kyla on to talk about recession stuff because I have a lot of thoughts on this and Kyla is incredibly knowledgeable and has, she'll be able to have just a bunch of stats lined up. But, and we will get to a little bit about what Jerome Powell testified to <clears throat> yesterday, which is two days ago for you guys watching. But don't do it, Ben. For us. <laughs> uh, but, I don't think that a recession is necessarily going to happen for a few just very basic reasons. But just real fast on the bear market, people were seeing like 100% year-over-year revenue growth and companies were like over-hiring and overpaying people. Uh, They were overpaying for acquisitions and it just felt like all the good times would never end. And then suddenly it all flips. And now it it went from peak euphoria to peak fear. So the thing is, though, and I think this is indicative of how everybody feels, when you spend that much time in peak euphoria, a.k.a. like a year and a half, two years like we just did, a reversion to the mean feels a lot more painful than it actually is, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, that euphoria is crazy. I mean, that's also... It, th- there's going to be a big difference, especially with people our age. Like, people's net worths, especially millennials, have like halved very quickly. Yeah, if, people, if they're in growth tech and stuff. Well, for, but for a lot of like a lot of people were in crypto. That's mm-hmm. getting like just cut in a big way. A lot of people were in growth stocks. A lot of people who are working for these tech companies and and growth companies are taking stock compensation. Yeah. And that's all going to start going way down. There are job offers that are getting rescinded. I keep seeing headlines yeah. about. But just just to put it all in context, yeah, the market has dropped considerably over the last few months, but we're still well above the highs of 2020 before the big crash. Yeah, I never had a spin riff sponsorship. The, I believe the S&P was around 3,200 or so, 32 or 3,300 just when we peaked in, in uh, 2020. And the S&P is now at like 3,700. We're still... Higher than that. But yeah, like a reversion to the mean feels pretty brutal. But uh, I did it away from the mic. Doing it away from the mic, I feel like satisfies people because there were some people in the comments saying like free Ben's burps 
but I I want to be cons- it wouldn't matter if a hundred people said burp into the mic if there's that one person who doesn't like it I'm gonna try to be considerate to that person. A couple of the comments were like it's 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 gross. It's just like I get it. feeling like someone's burping. It's in my ear. disgusting. I I understand. And look, I know we got a couple of little freakers listening who want to feel like they're getting yeah, burped and. <laughs> Okay. Burp in your mouth. Ben's playing to the freaks always. <laughs> always playing to the freaks. But so now, <clears throat> so what makes this inflation thing so nasty is it's the combination of people paying more for shit as they're seeing their savings and investments cut in half. Like the price of a gallon of gas in, well, in California is on par with the federal minimum wage. But also you're, yeah, that you're is you're not- living in California, the minimum wage here <clears throat> is what, 15 bucks or something? Yeah, I think we're at 15. So, eh. <laughs> that is not a reversion to the mean. No, that's that's just mean. That is just mean. Yeah. The, it shit is expensive. It's terrible. It's terrifying. Hey, I'm I'll throw it out there. I still got that code for that Upside app. If you want to save money on Oh, that's going to fucking help. DM me, baby. Uh yeah, it gives you if you use my code for the first time you get 15 cents per gallon off. That's pretty good. For the first time. But then after that, it's just whatever local gas station is offering. But it's usually like 10, 15 cents off. That Better depends. than Biden can do. Yeah. Joe Byron. Wait, so you're you're thinking no recession's coming. Well, okay. Let, let's talk about what Powell, Jerome Powell, because he's testifying right now. He's It's the second yeah. part of his semi-annual um, thing where he talks to the we Senate. We only know what he said yesterday. Yeah, which is two days ago again. Shut and what he's up. saying right now is r- happening what if right no one now. What watches on Saturday, Sunday, Monday? Well, they're just going to have to they, fucking not... do the math yeah, all right. like I'm trying to do. So Powell is just saying a lot of the same thing. And, and for those of you who have been living under a rock, hello, open up the rock. We're trying to help you. You got to go. <laughs> What's the rent like under there? Is there a bathroom? Where do you pee? What are you trying to say? (laughs) Trying to say Jerome Powell uh, is—he's the chairman of the Fed. Head of the Fed, unelected, and uh, that's appointed. Appointed, and I think it was Senator one of the Kennedys uh, said to him yesterday. Wait, wait, wait. Which one? Not the dead one. Whoever's alive now? Which Kennedy? I don't think he's Kennedy. I mean, his his name is Kennedy, but he's not like Kennedy. He's like a weird Republican. He's oh, gotcha. He. He said something to Jerome Powell that I I feel like Powell already knew and it's probably gone to his head. He said that you are arguably the most powerful man in America, yeah. if not the world right now. And he really is. I don't fucking think that's true. I think it's because there's such feckless cowards that because there's two options. You can give it to the Fed. We've talked about this. You can give it to the Fed and you could be like, you know, push your one button, do the one thing you can fucking do and bring inflation down. Mm-hmm. Or you could be a politician and try to do the very hard thing, which is to actually like fight these things. Like with the things we were talking about, do anything about the supply chain, do anything about monopolies, do anything about corporate greed, do anything to rein in, uh, energy prices by going after, uh, energy companies. Yeah. But they go, well, that's fucking hard. So then they look at Jerome Powell and they go, you're the most powerful man, powerful man in the world. Help us. Jerome Powell, please, 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 please. waste of wait. Joe Biden sent a, he sent a letter to Texaco and they didn't like it so much. So yeah. please do something. <laughs> All right, guys. So check it out. You you probably heard about microdosing by now. Micro whating? Dosing. Oh. And if you haven't, you're living under a rock and knock, knock, open up the rock. Hey, it's me, your boy, to here to tell you about some microdosing. Everybody's doing it. They're doing it. It makes you feel healthier, perform better. You know why? Because you're not getting the full dose of, uh, of THC. That's the thing. So we want to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Microdose Gummies. They deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC that will make you feel just the right amount of good. So if you're, if you're new to microdosing, this is the perfect thing for you. Yeah, I've been... Uh... I've I've talked about before how how upset I get with how strong weed is these oh, it's days. Oh, so strong! And I still want to be able to partake. That's why uh, these gummies are so great. They've got they've got it all worked out. Number one, they taste great, and uh, I feel amazing when I take them. And you know, I use them to help me get in the zone when doing creative work. They help me sleep. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, a lot of people take it for that stuff. Personally. After a long, stressful day of trading, which is just about every single day, I need a little, uh, I need a little pick me up to help me wind down, chill oh, out, yeah. you know. So I've got to go up to go down. Pop one of these in the old, uh, in the old mouth. Sure. Enjoy that taste. It's really tempting to 
pop more, let me tell you. It's really been such a positive experience for me. It's been great for improving my sleep and recovering from workouts, especially after a weekend of climbing. Oh, baby, yeah. I, I know it. Your, your sore, beautiful body needs some restorative uh, time. Gummies. Yeah, some gummies. They help out. gummies. So Microdose is available nationwide. To learn more about microdosing THC, just do a quick search online, you know, go check it out. Or you can go to microdose.com and use our code TRILL to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. You can't beat that, folks. 30% off your first order. What are you waiting for? Links can be found in the show description. But again, that's microdose.com and use code TRILL. I know Michael Burry... Who we should try to get on the show. We should have the booking people try to talk to him. Just a note for our producers, um, and, and harass him on Twitter nicely. Tell him, <laughs> tell him to come onto the show. But he's speculating that the the Fed is just rapidly raising rates so that they can then maybe I don't know by December come in and save the day by lowering rates again. And just they're just increasingly getting the market hooked on the drug that is the Fed. They're keeping us well fed. Defed. Fed. De fed. But so Powell said that he is strongly committed <clears> to bringing down inflation with his mon- monetary policy tools, meaning higher interest rates until, what he says, until compelling evidence that inflation is coming down. And he did say that aside from food and energy prices, there is evidence that other areas are cooling down. I don't know what, but... You yeah, know, what? I mean, that's fuck fucking else. huge. It's yeah, like literally you're energy. seeing viral videos of people going, I had to make the choice between spending money on food or spending money on fuel this week. Yeah. So like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I mean, Elizabeth Warren, thank God, she's like, she was asking him. She said, War- Warren asked Powell if Fed rate increases will lower gas prices, which have hit record highs this month. I would not think so, Powell said. Mm-hmm. Warren asked if grocery prices will go down because of the Fed's war on inflation. I wouldn't say so, no. It's like, well, then what the fuck are you guys doing yeah. over there? Yeah. All he can do is raise unemployment to well, decrease demand. Well, that's so that's where I wanted to touch in. And he was saying that economic conditions are generally favorable. We do still have a strong labor market and persistently high demand. But I don't, it's weird. Like there's, there's two jobs available for every unemployed person in America right now. I know. Which is and, insane. And everyone keeps saying that. Joe Biden keeps saying, you know, record economy right now. But I don't think anyone's feeling that. And I don't, I, like, so I, right. I think I threw in here, there's the uh, the consumer uh, consumer sentiment. Yeah, here it is. Look at this. So uh, scroll up a little bit. So this is uh, Lynn Alden tweeting. She's got a graph here of the consumer sentiment, and she says the best sentiment was in 2000. The worst sentiment is now. Unprecedented. If you look at the chart, I mean, we're at all-time fucking lows here. This is insane. Worse than 2008 financial crash. Yeah. Well, so that is interesting. But when I see that as a trader, I'm like, oh, that means that we're near a low, like like a, a tradable definitive low, you know? Because look at what happened in 1980. You had the, the, it looks like we're, huh, God damn, Spindrift, your bubbly goodness is making me all, is, is fucking me up here. <clears throat> Bitch. What were you going to say, <laughs> motherfucker? What the fuck? <laughs> the sentiment, the sentiment, look what happened in, in 1980. I mean, when the sentiment, when the sentiment and things like this indicators, uh, breach all time highs or lows, it's generally, near a top or a bottom so uh, to me i see this and i'm like oh it probably won't get much worse yeah but that doesn't mean that just because it won't get much worse doesn't mean that it's not horrible and like so when you're looking at 2008 yeah we hit a bottom and then i mean we were we were and are still recovering from 2008 right in a way that like yeah people still haven't recovered and we're getting hit with another one yeah i saw a so it doesn't really matter if it's like well this is the bottom it's like it's going well Okay, I still yeah. haven't recovered from the last one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I saw a great thing this morning, or was it yesterday? Can't remember. Anyway, it likened the last couple of years to a hurricane. And you know how the eye of a hurricane is tranquil. If you're in the eye of a hurricane, it looks like just a normal day. Sun's shining, there's... That's a myth. Everything is... No, it's not. Is it real? yeah. Eyes, the eye of a hurricane can be like 10 miles long or what? wide or whatever. And they they likened it to like, okay, 
uh, in in March of 2020, we were just getting absolutely blasted by hurricane, economic hurricane. You know, the, the economy fucking grinded to a halt, and it was just what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and then boom. We're in the eye of the storm, and we got fiscal stimulus, and we got everything, and then everything surges back, and it seems like uh, the good times are here to stay, and, well, we weathered that, and so we can weather anything, and SPACs, and Chamath, and Bitcoin, and Dogecoin, and NFTs, and all this shit, and everybody's just thinking, oh, the, the storm has passed. Meanwhile, we're in the fucking eye. We were in the eye, and now we're on the other side of it, where, holy shit, the wind is returning, because now we're dealing with supply chain issues, and now... Uh, uh, we got to raise interest rates and inflation and uh, and Joe Biden fell off bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, the, I mean, the, the bicycle thing is funny and I, I don't even, I watched it. I don't even think it's because he's old. It is no, what, it's like whatever, but it's like. Also, he's riding a bicycle. That's impressive. Horrible timing when everyone's like, Joe, you're too old to handle this. We need someone who can fucking yeah. figure all this out for us. You're just like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa! Uh, I did see something interesting, and a lot of people have been um, DMing me about this. Apparently on TikTok, there's been a groundswell of people trying to band together to not buy oil on July 3rd through 5th. Don't oil Not buy gas, gas. Gas. Sorry. Okay. Gas. Gas. Um, and it's interesting. Because I won't stop buying oil. Yeah. I love oil. Give me that petroleum jelly. That's not going to do anything. I don't buy gas every two fucking days. I know. And it, but you got to do it for like- a month. People have tried that before. I think I remember even in the MySpace days, people trying to get mass protest things like that to catch on, but they don't because it's just we weren't as connected as we are now. And now more than ever, we do. I, it feels like we do have the capability to band together and stick it to billionaires. It's I like don't the think one. We do you don't think we do? Well, I mean, especially not in the gas. I, I think the ga- <clears throat> the gas prices. I think are here to stay. Uh, it's I think, terrifying. I don't think so. I think, I think oil companies know that their days are numbered, mm. and I think renewables are coming, but they can't come quick enough to replace oil. And yeah, they're artificially keeping supply low, so they can keep prices really high. I read that in 2023, demand for oil is going to surpass supply for oil, and it's just going to get even worse. So, really? Yeah, but because they can, they can drill and turn it on whenever. Yeah, they want. we don't. Yeah. We haven't. I uh, on the radio this morning. They were saying uh, that we haven't had a new refinery built in the United States in like thirty years, which is bananas. I mean, it's also weird that everyone's pushing for more. All we want to do is get off fucking oil. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Is like okay, <sighs> sure. What makes the most sense now is to. It's like you gotta hurt yourself in the in the immediate term right. to save yourself. Well, not you. You hurt yourself in the long term to save yourself in the immediate term because, like, we gotta get off of this shit. But at the same time, we gotta have a country to, and we gotta have a people to have a future. You know, I don't know. We gotta have a people to have a future. Put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> You sound like Joe Biden. Don't make me put on the hat and sunglasses. We gotta have a, we gotta have a people, people if we want a future. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? There's Joe? there are so many ways that America could be fixed if we just implemented just give us a a fucking New Deal deal where we 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 make infrastructure that that's not fucking car dependent, man. Oh, I mean, build the trains. <laughs> Build the, build the train. That's something like I, that's a shirt I can get on board with. Build the build trains. the trains. Build the trains. God Christ! Like just why? Oh shit! Uh, it, it doesn't make sense. Just make it work, people. Ooh, best nation in the world. Then prove it. Ben, for the audio listener, Ben is doing this like uh, Ace Ventura. He's bent over and he's <laughs> spreading his butt cheeks as he says it. <laughs> My poor raw ass. Is it still raw? <laughs> yeah. I was given a prescription, but Here we I, go. I, I, <laughs> I was given a prescription cream, but I haven't got <laughs> a call from the pharmacy yet. So I think I need to call them and be like, uh, do you have my ass cream? Man, we it's are all just, the way in Burbank. We're just built different. Uh, who, you and I? Yeah. Why? Your ass is no, fine? It, it just reminded me of uh I got back from Greece on I don't know Monday and 
me and Ben were talking and he was like, Oh, how was your trip? Like, well, and I was telling him all these fun stories. And then he was like, <clears throat> and you didn't get any traveler's diarrhea. You didn't get any traveler's diarrhea. And I was like, no. And then when we hung up the phone, I said, what the fuck is traveler's diarrhea? If you've had traveler's diarrhea, send it off in the comments. What does that mean? You just it get mean, it. From it like, <laughs> yeah. Like different water, for example. Oh, like Montezuma's revenge. No. Well, sort of, but, um, you know, when you travel, you're you're experiencing different water, different food, and it, it, it is a common enough occurrence to be named traveler's diarrhea. Yeah, see, there it is. When you Google it, it is a digestive tract disorder that commonly causes loose stools and abdominal cramps. It's caused by eating <laughs> contaminated food or drinking contaminated water. I was in Greece. That's I... Yeah, well, Greece sounds like a... I don't think I've ever gotten traveler's diarrhea. I've been to like... I've been to a lot of places. I don't think I've ever gotten. Well, look at you, Mister Perfect Genetics. I don't... <laughs> I have a sensitive tummy. Yeah, you do. One time I got diarrhea on an airplane from the food that they served, and I was so lucky that I was sitting in like the bulkhead row, so I was one of the first to get served. So therefore, I was one of the first to experience the uh, intensity. So I got in the bathroom. I was all good. I felt fine. And then, like fifteen minutes later, there is a line. Damn, that that's bathroom. horrible. Yeah. And I remember thinking, you poor motherfuckers. <laughs> me and my fast metabolism, I was like 25. Like Me and my fast metabolism, we processed it. We got rid of it. M- my body said, out. And I said, okay. Wow. So that's the story. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, I, I had this guy on the fucking... Actually, it doesn't matter. It's not even a good Yeah. Okay. Well, so Biden today called on Congress to suspend federal gas taxes for three months, which would save people a whopping 18 cents per gallon. I don't even think it's going to be that... I, like, I think when they work it out, it's not going to be that high. It's just pathetic. And, and I mean, we had said... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oil demand is expected to exceed supply by 2023. Um, gas does not need to be this high. Like, oil companies... Uh, that's they're keeping the supply artificially low. They're trying to make they're trying to make their nut before renewables take over. It's really just insane. Like, okay, you got it. You got your nut. Did you see uh Joe Biden I was talking about it before, I was joking, but Joe Biden like sent a letter to the head of some oil companies. Really? And what did he say? Please. Like, please. Please. For the American people. I fell off my bike. <laughs> was he biking in an effort to be like you guys just got a bike? I don't know. I don't know. Because remember when Pete Buttigieg became the... <clears throat> Transportation guy? Yeah. Buy an electric car. Well, no, he but he was doing all these photo ops of like him <laughs> in his suit with a dumb little helmet. God. Uh, but yeah, the the um, oil execs basically told him to fuck off. Of course and, they did. Um, and the Republicans aren't going to do shit because they're in big oil's pocket. And uh, he made a little... It was funny. He made a little comment like, oh, I didn't know they'd be so sensitive. But uh, hmm. that is true. it'd be nice if you could do something. He also signed legislation to improve oversight of ocean shipping to help ease inflation and ease export backlogs. It's meant to increase the transparency of industry practices. We'll see. I mean, the more I read about it, the more it was like, I mean, this is good in theory, but it'll probably take years to implement. Did you read about it? Yeah, but yeah, they're also going to have to... Because uh, part of the thing that, that David have, Dayen was talking about was... Uh, yeah, he was talking about this a little bit. They'll have to actually es- execute and allocate resources to doing all these things. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. But So that actually um, prompted me to... It, rem- it reminded me of my two favorite shipping company logos. You have two, you have two favorite shipping companies. I logos. do have two. Because, you know, there's a lot of shipping companies out there. Um, APL, HMM, there's Cisco, PPO, Costco, HMO. or not Cisco, Costco, uh, PPO, HMO, ABC, th- one, two, three, <laughs> Bitcoin, bitch. <laughs> I just keep, I just like saying it. But I think you just like having a free pass to saying the B word. Oh yeah. So check out this one, bitch. If you type in, if you, if, this is one of my, fa- this is my first favorite logo, M O L. Look at this fucking look at this logo. <laughs> so you it saw, is, where did you see this logo? I see it everywhere. You see it Start everywhere. Start paying attention. No, this, I it refuse is a, to pay attention. It is a prominent company. It the for those for the audio listener, I wish you could see it. It looks very European. You have to you have to Google it to believe me. It's a dumb looking alligator, cartoon alligator with bug eyes sitting in the, in a circle holding a container on its shoulder. And it's just funny. It's just M O L. Okay, great. Let's see. But Ben's then the other second one, favorite the other shipping <laughs> company logo, Dong Fang, 
Dong Fang. It is two dolphins. Fucking it, each it other. It looks like they're fucking each other. Damn, this one's horny as hell. It is called Dong Fang. <laughs> it's just it's just the best. Every time I see it, I go, Dong Fang. Dong Fang. And it's got little water droplets coming out. And it's I don't think just, that's water, pal. Uh, as one, one might say, I mean, dolphins are a famously horny ocean mammal. Are they mammals? They're mammals. Yeah. Yeah. They're mammalian. Don't, so, wasn't there those guys fang. who would like fuck the dolphins? Uh, there is a contingent of people who do indeed fuck dolphins. No, no, no. They're like researchers. Uh, what? I think they would have them in captivity and have sex with the dolphins. What do you mean there's a contingency of people? Are they going out in the wild and fucking the dolphins? Yeah. I mean, no way. Dolphussy do be gripping. <laughs> there's no way. Yeah. How the hell are you going to go find a dolphin to have sex with? Uh, on a pier? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've read about on or <laughs> heard about people like a dolphin comes up and you just like have to like. You know, it's like my octopus teacher, where you have to just keep coming back, and then hopefully the animal goes like, "Oh, I know that guy. He he's, didn't have sex he's with DTF. the octopus. We don't know that. <laughs> we don't know that. We don't know that. And I'm sure he did. The octopus might. The octopus was very curious and was like putting its little feelers, sucklers all over him and like touching his face because that's how it like Learn. learns and like, oh, here you are. One day where he was like, feel this. There was for sure. There was one day where he's like. My wife's not underwater with me. <laughs> and he's like, it's learning. <laughs> His wife's at the surface with a, just, just like finally following him one day. I've got to see what he's doing. Is he cheating on me with another woman? Oh, no, it is just an octopus. And she's watching just like, oh, how sweet. What? Oh, my God. Let it learn. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's underwater. So it would just be. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I bet an octopus would give a mean handy. It'd be uh, a few handies. Yeah, it would just be able to fully envelop it. It'd be so many tentacles. Yeah. And they're not called tentacles, right? What Isn't are they the called? proper word suckles, sucklers, or something like that? No, I don't think so. I, I don't, don't know. know. If only there were a way to find <laughs> out. But <laughs> Okay, but what I'm saying, back to my original point about which one. <laughs> <laughs> the dolphins that are getting fucked, oh. I think, are in captivity. Oh, so is it like it's pretty dark. assault, or is it? Because I know that they're. I think it's a similar situation where they're going. We had to do it for research. The guy's going. I, I had to fuck this dolphin. Mm. It was presenting in such a way. Would it be dussy or dolphussy? You tell me, Ben. I... <laughs> Sound off in the comments <laughs> if you've made it this far into the episode. Let us know if a dolphin's vagina would be. Dussie That's a Ben thing. Tag him. I don't want to know. Fussy. No, tag Emil because he <laughs> needs to know. Um, <laughs> we got a lot coming up in the after hours. We're talking Are about. Are we done? Uh, yeah, we're almost there. Um, we're going to talk yeah, we... about air taxis coming to the. Oh, we got to talk about the FDA banning Juul. We got Axel Rose being out of breath. Uh, uh, housing oh, bubble. Amazon's running out of people to hire. Oh, yeah, we saw that. That's wild. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What are you doing, stand up? What else? What uh, else? What else? Uh, what else? Uh, what what else? else? Uh, you guys heard this put one? That on a t shirt. You guys heard this one? Oh, here's one. Hey, you guy, what about you and your fucking. What are you. Uh... What's the deal with uh, sunglasses, anyway? I do like. I'm going to the optometrist today. I can get a new, gla- new prescription. Get new glasses. Can get I, glasses. You know what glasses. was. Okay. What? Well, this is probably an after hour story, anyway. But, what? Uh, Tease it. I lost my bag. Or your I didn't fanny fucking, pack? No, no, no. I, oh, your actual suitcase. ITA Airways lost my fucking suitcase. Ugh. And did you get it back? Yes. It was crazy. But it was such a long story. But so for a while I didn't have my contacts and I went to uh I was like so pissed and my family was like, just go get new contacts. And I was like, how the fuck can you do that? Because in America, if you want contacts, you have to have a prescription, right? You right. got to show them your prescription. They'll give you, I'm just powering through. I don't care that you're doing it. <laughs> <clears throat> and, <laughs> and they were like, what are you talking about? If you know your prescription, just go get whatever. You, so we yeah, go plus to, or minus whatever. Right. We go to the optometrist and you can just pick out contacts in Greece without a prescription. Wow. And so- I couldn't get over it. And they were making fun of me. They were like, they were like, you can't get contacts without your prescription. And then they were like, but you guys can all get guns whenever you want. I was like, fuck off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's some other breaking news. The the Supreme Court, the um, 
Supreme Court overruled some hundred year old law in New York. Good. That, that you you can you don't need a reason to carry a gun. That's a good T-shirt. You don't need a reason to carry a gun. <laughs> well, because I guess before, apparently, there was a law that was like, you need to tell them why you need it. You you basically need to say, here's why I need to be able to carry a gun right, in order like, to get your license to carry a gun. You're like, because... Because I'm- I don't trust people. Right. And now it's just, hey, and now you can carry a gun. Okay, we're being told to wrap up, folks. So if you want to join us in the after hours, go to tmgstudios.tv and sign up for one of the tiers. Like, subscribe, comment. We love you. Kill your parents. Quit your job. Shit those pants. I want to see photos of shit in pants. No. I want to see buttholes puckered loose. I want to see good circulation, poor circulation. Why do I sound like John Mulaney? Ugh. You keep slipping into John Mulaney. No, I don't. Should we just keep talking until our producers just cut it off? This week on After Hours. Billie Eilish admitted it. Hey, Billie Eilish. I I got to study. (laughs) Mom, I'm, no, I'm cleaning my room. Sign up on tmgstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.